now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one country. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Ride'em Cowboy! Yes, sirree. Little wonder many a top-action Hollywood movie star goes for a breakfast of Quaker-puffed rice or Quaker-puffed wheat. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a man-size taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It was late summer in the Yukon when Sergeant Preston and King returned to Dawson City after a trip to Forty Mile and reported to Inspector Maynard at Mounted Police Headquarters. King's help, the constable and I finished the case up there in short order, sir. The men who robbed the express office are behind bars. I knew you wouldn't have come back unless they were, Sergeant. And I'm glad you're back. We have a case right here that needs attention. Oh? What is it, sir? Murder. Murder, eh? Has the killer been caught? No. You remember that old sourdough, Jeff Beckett? Yes, I do, sir. He has a cabin on the south edge of town. Well, old Jeff was the victim. He was found dead in his cabin this morning. I see. Mike and Joe Dolan, who lived just beyond Jeff's you place... You mean the Dolan brothers who own the general store? That's right, Sergeant. They stopped by to see if old Jeff wanted to give them an order to bring out when they went home. It seems that they were in the habit of doing that. Yes, sir, I know. Well, they found the door partly open and Jeff lying on the floor inside. He had been knifed over the heart. The knife was gone. They came right in and reported it this morning. I sent Constable Canby out there with the coroner right away. They find any clues? Canby said what seemed to be footprints made by a woman's shoe outside the door. Oh, well, that trail ought to be easy to follow. Well, now, wait till I finish, Sergeant. The old man had his gun in his hand, and it hadn't been fired. The coroner decided that the only way it could have happened was by someone who was an expert at throwing a knife. Someone who threw it faster than the old man could draw his gun. I see, sir. Just after they arrived at the cabin, there was a heavy downpour of rain. Oh. Not only that, but you know how fast news travels here, Sergeant. A curious crowd followed them out there and tramped all around the place. There goes any chance of having King follow a trail. That's what I mean. The footprints were obliterated. Canby is working on the case. He's making inquiries in around town now. Well, perhaps he'll turn up something, sir. Do you mind if King and I go to Jeff's cabin anyhow, just to have a look around? No, go right ahead, Sergeant. I want you to work in this case with Canby until you find the murderer. We'll do all we can, sir. I'll come back here after we visit the cabin. Come along, King. <laughs> after leaving headquarters, Sergeant Preston, with King trotting at his side, rode out to old Jeff Beckett's cabin. Oh, Mikey. He's in As he dismounted, he looked around carefully. It's too bad we didn't get here while those footprints were undisturbed, eh, fellow? Let's take a look inside. Entering the cabin, Sergeant Preston and King looked around, but found nothing significant. King sniffed the air, whining. I know, King. There's more than one scent in here to confuse you. Well, come on, fellow. We might as well go back to headquarters. Come on. Steady, Blackie. Steady now. Get up there. A short time after Sergeant Preston left headquarters, Constable Frank Canby triumphantly entered the inspector's office with a slim young man who was wearing handcuffs. All right, Dennis, go on in. 
Well, what's this? I've cracked the murder case, Inspector. Here's the killer. What? Yes, sir. This is Dennis Ames, who works in the express office. I know, but what do you <laughs> I mean? didn't do it, I tell you. Facts are against you, Dennis. You might as well own up to the fact that you killed Jeff Beckett yesterday and made off with his gold. <sighs> but I keep telling you. I didn't do it, I swear I didn't. What are the facts against him? He rode into town last night, sir, went to the cafe. He invited everybody to have a treat on him, with him footing the bill. Yet he makes only a small salary at the express office. But I told you, went to the carnival just north of town yesterday and won that money. I found out that Jeff Beckett went to the carnival, too. They say he was showing a lot of gold around. He left early. That has nothing to do with me. He must have followed him and jumped him at his cabin. No, no, I didn't. If that's all you have to go on, I don't now, see just a minute, where... Inspector, please. Last night, when he was in sort of a gay mood... Dennis Ames was showing a knife around at the cafe. I found a knife along the trail. Honest, you have to believe me. I wouldn't be showing it around if I'd used it to kill anyone, would I? You might, in the condition you were in last night. Uh, just a minute. What about the footprints that were reported, Constable Canby? You and the coroner, as well as the two Dolans, I said... know, sir. They looked like the footprints of a woman. But Dennis here is from Texas. He always wears those high-heeled boots he has out now. There are small sizes, you can see, sir. We could have mistaken his footprints for a woman's. What about the knife you spoke of? I have it here. I went by his cabin and found it there on the table. Mm. Dennis, I hate to do this, but the facts are against you. We'll have to hold you as a suspect. No. No, I didn't do it. I didn't. Sorry, Dennis. Come on, I'll have to lock you up. I didn't kill him, I tell you. You can't blame me. I didn't kill him. On the way back to headquarters, Sergeant Preston decided to stop off at the general store. Oh, Blackie, hold up. Wait here, King. Wait, boy. Well, Sergeant Preston, how are you, sir? Fine, Mike. I understand you and Joe are the ones who found Blackett's body this morning. That's right. Poor old chap. It was quite a shock, I can tell you. The coroner said he'd been dead for quite some time. Since late yesterday, uh, last night maybe. If you can find the woman who made them footprints, you'll have the killer society. Too bad it rained this morning and so many people went out there. Oh, here comes Joe. He's huh? been at the cafe. Good afternoon, Sergeant. How are you, Joe? Mike and I were just discussing the murder. Maybe it'll surprise you to know that Constable Canby caught the killer just a short time ago. Which that you say? Canby found the murderer? Well, who is she, do you know? Tisn't a she, Sergeant. He just took in Dennis Ames, that young Texan fella, as the killer. Dennis Ames? Now, hold on a minute, Joe. You know as well as I do, those were the prints of a woman's shoe we saw. Dennis wears small western boots with those high heels. He was throwing around a lot of gold at the cafe last night, they say. And he was showing a knife, which he says he found on the way in from the carnival. Wish now. In spite of it all, I say the prints were too small for any man. Boots or not. I've sold shoes too long not to notice. I believe Dennis when he says he found that knife. He's a nice lad. Somehow I would never have thought that Dennis Ames could harm anyone. The facts are the facts, Sergeant. He's in a bad spot one way or the other. Uh, there must be some way to show that Dennis didn't do it. I wish I could help the lad. The only way to help Dennis Ames, Mike, is to find the killer. You still think it was a woman, eh? That I do. He says he won his gold at the carnival, and I believe him. I was at the cafe last night when he said that. But I left before he showed the knife around, like they say he did. And who's to say he didn't find that too? The killer might have thrown it away or dropped it. Oh, it is possible. He said he found it coming from the carnival. That's right. The carnival? I wonder. Sure, and I heard several say that they saw old Jeff at that carnival yesterday. With plenty of gold to spend. I see. I think I'll ride out to that carnival right now and look around. How about uh, taking me along with you, sir? All right. Come on, Mike. Later that afternoon, Sergeant Preston, with King at his side, walked slowly along the midway of the carnival. Uh, sure, and there are plenty of women with this carnival, Sergeant. And most any one of them could have seen old Jeff with all the gold he was carrying. Uh, he was a great one for making a show of what he had to spend. It's difficult to know just where to start looking for the one who might have... Now, wait a minute, Mike. Let's stop here. Quiet, King. Jeff is shown in the Yukon. Yes! But only ten cents, you can come right inside and see Carlotta. 
the gorgeous and regal gypsy queen. Yes, folks, don't miss seeing this beautiful gypsy girl actually pin the man to the wall with sharp gleaming knives thrown from 12 feet away. Step right up. The show starts in a minute. Remember the price you're going to take. I sure go right ahead. Now listen a minute, folks. Just a minute. I know that man. Pig and I saved him from wolves. Two winters ago, and there's Selkirk. Is that the truth now? Well, what do you know about that? Folks, I have an announcement to make. The beautiful Carlotta won't be able to perform in her usual way this afternoon. But, but she will appear on the platform inside with her display of knives and will give an instructive and entertaining talk on her experiences in Europe and America. Now, each and every person who pays the admission price of 10 cents will receive a picture. Yes, I said a picture of this marvelous gypsy queen. Get your tickets right now. Thank you. All right, step right up, folks. Get your tickets here. Only 10 cents. Step right up. Come on, Mike. We'll go inside. Come along, King. <laughs> Sergeant Preston and Mike moved to the front of the crowd near the small platform on which Carlotta stood waiting. King stood beside Preston. The great dog stared at the bespangled woman, his nose in the air, sniffing. Then a low growl rose in his throat. Quiet, fellow. The understanding between Preston and King was great, and the husky's low growl had meaning for the Mountie. He noticed that Carlotta had her right arm in a sling. The crowd quieted as she finally spoke. But this is most unfortunate that I have hurt my arm. Yesterday morning I had the bad fall, so I cannot throw the knives. But I will show them to you. I removed the cloth covering from this velvet-covered board, and so, there they are. The beautiful gleaming knives held there in the loop. Look, Mike, the bottom loop is empty. One of those knives is missing. It's preserved. Now, Maybe someone stole Oh, Mike, I have a feeling Carlotta's the one we're looking for. But in the same sake, we've got to prove it somehow. We'll continue our story in just a moment. <whistles> Fellas and girls, look it. Man, oh man, here's the tallest man I've ever seen. I am the tallest man. The tallest man in the world. Boy, you must be. Say, uh, how's it feel to be the tallest man in the world? No different. Gosh, I'll bet you eat a lot. Three good meals a day. Gee. What's your favorite meal? Breakfast, naturally. Breakfast, huh? Say, ever eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat? Do I? Every day. Oh, you like rice or wheat shot from guns? Nothing better. Boy, you must be champagne Quaker puffed rice and wheat eater. By and by the case. What do you like best about them? They're big. About eight times normal size, like me. Bet you use lots of milk and cream. Got my own cow. Anything else you like about Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat? That nut-like flavor. And they're good for you. That's right. A fellow like you needs plenty of food energy. And rice or wheat shot from guns furnishes extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, mind if I ask you one more question? Go right ahead. Well, tell me, uh, how's the weather up there? Oh, rather crisp and fresh. Like Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. (laughs) Say, you are a fan. I guess you know Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat of rice shot from guns, you always buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat shot from guns. Try them for breakfast tomorrow. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston felt certain that somehow Carlotta had killed old Jeff Beckett in spite of the sling and her alibi that she'd been hurt the morning before. Preston, with Mike and King, left the tent and went to the place where the horses were waiting. 
right back into town, Mike. I have a few questions I'd like to ask Dennis Sam. Sure, but uh, why don't we look around a bit more, Sergeant? Since that gypsy girl has had her arm in a sling since yesterday morning, it stands to reason she Mike, could Mike, I noticed something in that connection. And what was that? The barker outside didn't seem to know Carlotta was injured until Anton came out and made the announcement. Holy smoke, that's right. The girl hadn't been putting on her act since yesterday morning. That barker would have known it. Say now, why didn't you ask Because him? carnival people stick together and close up like a clam. One other thing. Did you notice when King growled in there? I did that. I wondered. I feel sure King recognized Carlotta's scent as one of those he found at Jeff's cabin. I couldn't go only by that, of course. But... I get what you mean. <laughs> King, you're a wonder. King and I are both working in the dark in a way, Mike, but we hope for the best. Let's get going. Right, steady, buddy. Hey, steady. Eat it. Come on, buddy. Returning from the carnival grounds, Mike stopped at his store and Sergeant Preston and King went on to police headquarters. As the Mountie and his dog entered, Constable Frank Canby rose from a chair to greet them. Hi, Sergeant. Hello there, King, old boy. Hello, Hello. Frank. Uh, Inspector told me you were working on the Beckett murder case, Sergeant. That's right. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I've caught the murderer already. No, Frank, you brought in a suspect, but you can't say you've caught the murderer. There's a difference, you know. Well, if you mean we haven't enough to make a case against him, I feel sure Ames will break down and confess before very long. Why should he? Frankly, I don't believe he did it. You, you don't? That's right, I don't. Well, Sergeant, I respect your judgment a Mike lot. Mike Dolan has convinced those footprints at Beckett's place were definitely those of a woman. He went with me to the carnival grounds a while ago, and there's a woman out there. I who... know. I went there early this morning and talked to the gypsy knife to her. Oh. She has an airtight alibi. She never left the carnival. What's more, her arm is injured, and has been since yesterday morning, as you probably found out. Yes, I saw her arm in a sling. A man who works with her, a fellow named Anton, swears to her alibi. And they both claim someone stole one of her knives, too. Well, Ames was at the carnival yesterday afternoon, and he had a knife, just like the one that was lost. I see. I'd like to have a few words with your prisoner, Frank. Want to come along? Yes, I would, Sergeant. If you think you can prove someone else murdered Jeff Beckett, I'd like to see how you go about it. It's all right with me. Let's go. Come along, Gig. He's in the end cell. I don't think he'll be there very long. Well, I hope you're right, Sergeant. Yet I... Oh, well, that's a cell right there. Ames, Sergeant Preston wants to talk to you. Hello, Sergeant. Look, I didn't Take know. it easy, Dennis. Will you answer a few questions for me? You have the right to refuse if you want to. Sure, I'll answer what I can. Is that your dog, King? I've heard about it. Never saw him before. Yes, that's King. I guess I always left him outside when I went into the express <laughs> office. As the men momentarily observed King, the great dog sat at Preston's side, panting. The Mountie noticed immediately that King showed absolutely no interest in the young man standing just the other side of the bars. And this fact gave added significance to his theory that Dennis hadn't been at the Beckett cabin. Preston turned again to Dennis. You were at the carnival rather late yesterday, weren't you, Dennis? Yes, yes I was. And you saw Jeff Beckett out there? I saw Jeff early in the afternoon. He was going around with a big poke of gold, having a time for himself. Spending it on folks, telling them like he always does that there was plenty more where that come from. You see, Sergeant? He admits he saw Jeff with a lot of gold and heard him boasting about having more. Now, look here. If you're all trying to track me... No, you, then... Dennis, I didn't come here to do that. I want to help you. You do? Yes. So help me, Sergeant. I wasn't anywhere near to Jeff Beckett's place. Well, you can help me find out who did go there, Dennis. Did you notice whether that gypsy girl did her knife-throwing act yesterday afternoon? Well, yeah. I went in and watched her throw those knives. Oh? Well, you wouldn't admit that to the inspector and me a while ago, Sergeant. Instead of helping Wait himself, a minute, he's... Frank. Didn't you tell me a moment ago you learned the girl had her arm in a sling since yesterday morning? So she couldn't throw a knife either in her act or at Jeff Beckett? Yes, that's right, but... Holy mackerel, Sergeant, what are you driving at? I think she faked that injury, Frank, and that Anton lied to help her. I believe she spotted Beckett and followed him home and that the footprints are hers. But how could that be proved? Gosh. Gosh, if only you could prove it. Maybe I can. Mike and Joe Dolan would like to be in on the finish of this. Get them. Then meet me at the carnival tonight when it's closing. I think King and I have this figured out pretty well, and we'll try to get the proof we need. (laughs) 
That night, in the exhibit tent of the carnival, the gypsy girl Carlotta stood watching as the last group of people slowly went out. Then she called out loudly. Gus! Gus Anton! Shut up, Carlotta. Can't you wait till the people get out of the tent before you start yelling like a banshee? I'm sick of looking at them. Carry the knife board into my sleeping tent. All right. I've got it. Go ahead, lead the way. Do not let any of the knives drop out, Gus. I'm watching. Now look, Carlotta. No use to get sore when I mention it. But that sling is hurting business. The people that come here want to see you throw the knives like the posters out front say you do. It is something that cannot be helped, Gus. I knew the Mounties would send someone here this morning the first thing. And they did, as you know. Yes, and we convinced them. They arrested someone else. But I don't like the law coming around. I'm glad we'll be leaving the Yukon <laughs> soon. <laughs> oh, Gus, why do you always worry about things like you do? They have often been questioned by the law. That is what to expect when one is with a carnival. Maybe. But this is different. And what's more, you know it is. So? Did you not just say that they have catched someone and put him in the jail? He had my missing knife, remember? And they blame him. So why should we be bothered more? I don't like it anyway. Here's my tent. Put the knife board over there by my cart. All right. There. I am weary, Gus. Such a place for a woman. Tomorrow we'll be leaving on the boat to the state. There we can make more money with our act. We haven't taken in much today with you wearing that sling. But perhaps we have profit by it more than you think, no? Yes. Maybe we did at that. Gus, I've been thinking. Perhaps we... <gasps> oh. Sorry I startled you. Pre Sergeant Preston. Yes, I have a little business with your friend Carlotta. Gus, you know this, Monty? Yes, yes, we, we have met before, Carlotta. You tell him to leave. He has no right to... Anton, that alibi you gave for Carlotta this morning, it wasn't true, was it? Oh, yes, yes, it was, Sergeant. She, she hurt her arm yesterday. It has been in that sling. Helpless. She was here all afternoon yesterday. You know, of course, that a young chap's been taken into custody as a murder suspect. We have here the news, Sergeant. It is too bad, no? No. He won't be in jail long. You mean you would try to pin that murder on me, huh? <laughs> Go away, please. We have not the time for talking nonsense. I could not throw the knife, as you can see. The law is bothersome. But we in the carnival are used to it. Oh. I am not afraid of you. Uh, Carlotta, please. It is no way to talk. Oh. I'm tired. I shall rest on my Anton, I'm convinced your so-called gypsy queen has gold hidden in this tent that belongs to old Jeff Beckett, and I'm going to search for it. Gus, he has no right. Do not let him. I cannot stop him, Monty, Carlotta. Gus, Anton, has more respect for the law than you have, Carlotta. I'll start the search for that trunk there, right now. Gus, do something. Stop him, I say. Please, Carlotta, be quiet. He represents the law. Sergeant, stay away from that trunk. I warn you. Your warning doesn't mean much to me. Sergeant Preston stooped to open the trunk and seemingly took his eyes off Carlotta for the moment. In the shadows just outside the tent opening, the great dog King stood watching. He saw Carlotta quickly slide her arm from the sling and reach behind her to the board that held the sharp, gleaming knives. In an instant, a knife was in her hand, and the intelligent dog knew it was time to act. Let's King go. saw the man, Anton, dart forward, but Carlotta, blazing with fury, shoved Anton backward, causing him to fall. He struck the knife board, and the knives fell loose, one of them falling under him on the ground. At the same time, Carlotta raised her hand for the throw at Preston. King sprang forward with a growl. Like a streaking shadow, the great dog leaped, grabbing Carlotta's upraised arm, causing her to fall to the ground. Stop him, help! Okay, All right, boy. He, he grabbed my injured arm. That beast. Don't put on an act. Are you all right, Sergeant? Yes, I'm all right. Glory be. We were picking him from outside. And we thought sure she was going to get you with that knife. Oh. I was ready, and so was King. Oh, my. Hey, what's the matter with him? Anton oh. fell on one of the loosened knives. I'll see if he's hurt. Watch her, King. Oh, Sergeant, one of the knives, it, it fell under me. The point went in my back. I, maybe I'm done for. Let me look at you, Anton. Oh. oh. Tell me, Gus, that alibi. It, it doesn't matter now. Maybe I'm dying. 
She's to blame for it and for the other killing, too. Gus, do not talk, please. Keep quiet, you. I have to, Carlotta. He saved my life once. You almost killed him just now. How did she work it, Gus? She she left here yesterday afternoon. Gone for a couple of hours. I took the Barker's place so he didn't know. She faked the arm injury. Huh? I I sort of like Carlotta, so I covered for her. Great day! Then she's the one who killed Jeff Beckett after all. No! You cannot prove that. You cannot. The old man's gold is in that trunk. His initials, J.B., are on the bags of gold. That settles it. Gus, you, you double-crosser. I am glad you are dying. I am a woman. I shall not hang. Gus isn't dying at all. The knife wound is superficial. What? The doctor in town can fix him up, and he'll live to testify against you, Carlotta. You, Sergeant. If once more I had the chance, I would... Oh, that dog. He was the one who spoils everything. <laughs> Too bad you didn't know the dog was waiting just outside. <laughs> I thought gypsy queens could tell what was to happen. Like the one across the way who told me fortune. <laughs> <laughs> that one's only a common gypsy, no doubt. Not a queen like the great Carlotta. <laughs> Such a fat one as you I'd like to have to throw the knives at. You've thrown your last knife, Carlotta. I'm arresting you in the name of the Queen for the murder of Jeff Beckett. Why, George, Sergeant, you did it. You proved Dennis Ames innocent. Better yet, Frank. With King's assistance, I proved Carlotta guilty. King knew that she'd been in that cabin. Now let's get back to headquarters. As far as I'm concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Hear this. Listen. Whatever you do, be listening to this program Monday. Remember, fellas and girls, you're in for such a treat Monday, you'll hardly believe your ears. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice have a surprise for you. Every single one of you listeners is getting in on something big, an offer that's out of this world. Tell your friends to listen. That's Monday. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case The Doctor Disappears. When Phil Carver's little boy became seriously ill and Dr. McComb couldn't be located, King and I took on the job of tracking down the doctor. We didn't know that he was being held prisoner by a pair of dangerous outlaws and that all of us, including Phil's family, would soon find ourselves at the outlaws' mercy. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker.